Hi, we're Group 55, Katrin Bertsovsky, Vinay Raman, and Natalia Leviton, and we're measuring the shape and brightness of galaxies with neural networks. We would like to find out how neural networks can be used to measure the shape and brightness of galaxies. Given the image of the galaxies, are we able to accurately predict these physical parameters, flux, Sersic index, ellipticity, and orientation? We use the threefold approach. We use the CNN model with noise, where we feed it noisy images and try to predict the five parameters. We use the CNN model with no noise, where we input generated images without noise, and we use this two-step approach using conditional denoising autoencoder using noisy images as input and it regenerates images without the noise that are fed then into CNN model with no noise. The original data set contained over 18,000 images that describe the galaxy's brightness and shape but we found that using variable PSF uh, that it's not appropriate to use it to train our model so we decided to generate our own data set with constant PSF and larger 30,000 images. Uh, we tried to see the correlation and we found that flux, Sersic index, and Sersic radius are not correlated with each other and are independent. The distribution of parameters showed us that flux has a skewed Gaussian distribution and Sersic index and Sersic radius have uniform distributions. We found that varying flux from 30k to 400k has no significant differences. We found that Sersic index uh, shows that luminous spread is shrinking as you increase it. Galaxies become more elliptical and more luminous as we increase the Sersic index. The axis ratio uh, ranges from 0.1 to 1. The galaxy shape change shapes from elliptical to spherical. And the orientation of galaxy changes as expected when you change the position of the angle. After we have generated the data using the Gaussian software, it was time to build a model to predict the five parameters defining the galaxy shape and brightness. To do so, we have decided to build the CNN model, given that we were dealing with the uh, image data. Our network architecture looked as follows. Uh, our inputs were 64 by 64 galaxy images with noise that were fed into four groupings of convolutional max and dropout layers. In the first grouping, we also had a batch normalization layer to ensure all our inputs were normalized. Our convolutional layers grew from 32 filters in the first grouping to 64, then 128, and then 256 uh, filters in the last grouping. After that, we flattened the image and applied three dense layers, culminating in a dense layer with five filters to predict the five parameters. We compiled our network using the Atom Optimizer and then trained it with uh, early stopping. And as we can see from the results, the model did quite well. Our validation accuracy was about 87%, and our validation loss was a little over 0.3. Looking at the visualization of the reconstructed image and comparing it to the original image, we can also see the model did quite well. Doing more model performance evaluation and benchmarking, we looked at the true versus predicted values for each of the five parameters, and we can see the model predicted uh, parameters for flux, G1 and G2, really well, while they're had to be some improvement for Sersic index and Sersic radius. R2, MSC, and RMSC values tell the same story, with R2, for example, being very high for flux, quite high for G1 and G2, and um, being quite low for Sersic index and Sersic radius. We also compared our model uh, performance in terms of variance to CRB for CNR values of 30 and 60, and again, we could see the same story. The model did quite well for flux, G1 and G2, and Sersic index and Sersic radius needed to be improved. We did some sensitivity testing as well in terms of understanding what was the impact of PSF being different on the test data from the training data set. And we can see that unfortunately, in this case, the model does not perform well. The model did not perform well in the case when the galaxies were off-center, therefore telling us that it was quite important to understand what the training data is and ensure that it's the same on the test data set. Uh, why not use or develop a denoising autoencoder in order to improve the performance of the CNN? The idea is that the denoising autoencoder removes the noise in the image and the reconstructed image without noise is fed as input to the CNN model. The DA uh, architecture is uh, comprises of uh, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder has uh, three convolution layers. The first layer has 128 filters. The second and third have 256 filters each. The, de the decoder has a similar architecture. It has three convolution layers. The first two have 256 two filters. The third one has 128 filters. Uh, in addition to the uh, regular encoder-decoder network, we also have these three layers, which calculate the minimum, maximum, and the mean intensity, pixel intensity of the image. And these three values are fed. They are actually concatenated to the bottleneck layer. The idea is that we're able to capture the uh, flux uh, parameter much better if we do this, uh, this method. And we look at the performance and compare that with the CNN model that was trained on noise images. We see that it does better as far as uh, uh, for three parameters, SASIC index, G1, and G2. However, for SASIC radio and flux, uh, the performance is not as, it's not as good, uh, as evident from the R-square values. Uh, and uh, the same goes with the root mean square and the mean square error values. Here is a plot of the uh, predicted value and the true value for uh, two, two different cases. The top one is the two-step model, and the bottom one is the, uh, is the uh, CNN model that was trained on noise images. Okay, as far as the reconstruction of image is concerned, it's able to do a pretty good job in denoising the image. Uh, the denoise image is, is pretty close to the image without no noise, uh, without noise. And uh, but then if you look at it closely, uh, the differences are, uh, are are significant, and that could probably be the reason why we are observing uh, low R square values uh, for the flux as well as the uh, SASIC uh, index found that uh, the uncertainty bounds for the parameters G1 and G2 is much lower uh, than the CNN model with noise. 
However, for the other three parameters, the, uh, the rebounds are larger. One of the reasons why uh, we think it may not be doing uh, as great a job as we expected it to do is because the convolution, so the uh, denoising autoencoder does a great job if you if you have only Gaussian noise in the system. For Poisson noise in the system, uh, the denoising autoencoder is not known to perform as well. Uh, we could be thinking of applying uh, variance scaling transformation uh, to the images uh, before applying the denoising autoencoder. Probably that could improve the performance a little bit. Okay, so the conclusions, we have shown there are two viable approaches. The first one is to use the naive convolution neural network and predict the parameters uh, by training them on uh, noise images directly. The other one is to use a denoising autoencoder and remove the noise in the image, and then use the reconstructed image without noise as input to the, as input to the convolution neural networks. If the underlying data doesn't have uh, the same PSF, then the predictions are pretty pretty bad. And for off-center galaxies as well, the predictions are not as good. If the data is well contained in the region uh, where the training data set has been sampled, we are able to do a pretty good job in, in predicting the shape and brightness of galaxies.